I find myself when it comes time to uh, brainstorm on ideas, content ideas, strategies. Uh, I find it's like opening up a a book to start writing something. You know, it's just I tend to just go blank there for a right. minute before I get into something. And then you know, it's like any type of creative event. It's you eventually get there. I was wondering if you had any strategies for. De developing that uh, that blueprint. So the keyword research process is a great place to start, not just for what you should have pages for, but as part of that process, to, you will discover, if, if you take the time to record the blog article ideas that you find along the way, that can be almost a limitless amount of content. The challenge is making sure it's unique to your website and you got something new and innovative to say to your audience about it. So, you know, if, as you're doing keyword research on, let's say, web design and branding, you're going to find all kinds of questions that people want to know about web design and branding. Problem is, is that a lot of ink a lot of virtual ink has been spilled on those topics. So that means you need to write about it in a way that's a different and unique than other people, but still maintaining the same topic. That's where it, it's a challenge. But the other way of looking at it, that's where you can be creative, right? That's where you're not just writing a, what does branding do for my company article? just like everybody else has an article about that. You could still write the same, it can have the same title, but you can find out what's different about, you know, what you do or the area in which you want customers or uh, problems that you have encountered or, you know, more anecdotal stuff for you. And heck, if you can produce data and insights, then it makes it even better because it's really easy just to write something, but it's a totally another ball game if it's something that has a lot more value and interest. So that stuff is gonna be hard for a writer to do, right? But the good news is you don't need to have as much quantity of that kind of stuff. You just need to have new and unique and good stuff. So I guess, the, I guess my suggestion is start while doing the key of a research process is making a record of all the potential blog posts you can. Mm -hmm. And then as those inspire you, that's probably the best place to start, right? Because that's going to be the most interesting to you and you're going to be able to write or at least talk to those for your writer to be able to write mm -hmm. more knowledgeably than some of the art, uh, topics you might find that really bore you. Yeah. Right. Now you might have to write some of the boring ones or maybe the boring ones, you just have the writer write it and you go move on. Mm -hmm. But the key is doing that. So a couple of, of ways to do this. Like one of my most successful clients, we just literally started writing down every question we can ever think of that anybody would ask in their industry. Just writing long lists of questions. Then we went to Google and we did uh, auto suggest and people also ask and people also search for. And we wrote down all those questions. And then we went to social media and we said, okay, what questions do people ask on social media about our industry? And we had so many questions. They, and they began game point where it's like so much overlap because sometimes people would ask the same question in different ways. So we didn't, but, but we just, we, we had no end the number of questions people wanted to know. And we just started writing, just started going. Mm -hmm. And it worked really, really well for them. Really well for them. Now, the, in, in my experience, in my own website, some of that stuff does okay. 
but it's the stuff where I take time and do my own data and analysis that really does a lot better. So like this week, I just, I think I hinted at this last time we spoke, I wrote an article about how John Mueller started criticizing thin, poor content on websites mm. and saying- I think I saw, I saw that, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, he basically said, if you have a lot of bad content on your website, it's gonna reflect poorly on your whole site. Yes. Yeah. And immediately I thought of terrible transcripts of videos on reliable or on curious ants. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's really bad content. I mean, it's meant well. I'm not trying to trick Google. I'm just trying to help people find what these videos are about. And, but what could be happening is that Google could interpret that as this is all low quality and the vast majority of its website are those automated transcripts. Therefore, the website as a whole is low quality. Mm -hmm. So I did a big analysis, pulled out all stops, crawled the website, pulled data from Search Console, and I came up with this big analysis and I published that. That is stuff that's really does well, but that took a lot of time it took a lot of data and it, and it frankly took me admitting, hey, I have a website and there's a lot of crappy content on it, you know, to be able to produce something that hopefully would be helpful. <clears throat> but the other side of it is sometimes you, you, if you just get in this routine of writing on a regular basis, something will hit now and then. <clears throat> and that is great. So, but you have to just keep that momentum going and eventually something will outperform the others and be worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah, there's thanks for the helpful tips there. That's that's good. <laughs>